Todd Owens here with you again, and I want to welcome you to this edition of Cavium's Intelligent IO Matters video series. Uh, this video is an update to our Connecting Shared Storage video that we first posted back in September of 2016. You know, there are new IO solutions that have been released since then, so we've updated the story to include the new technology in the discussion. One thing that hasn't changed is the explosion in storage growth. You know, we're being inundated with data from a variety of different sources, including mobile phones, IoT devices, and even smart cars, to name a few. The data needs to be stored and processed. In addition, storage technology like flash storage improves performance, making the connection between the server and shared storage devices a critical decision. So what kind of connection and storage transport do I use? In most situations, connecting shared storage comes down to two protocol choices, iSCSI or FiberChain. As I travel about and talk to HPE field partners and customers, here's what I hear on the street regarding these protocols. iSCSI is for entry or SMB customers. Fiber Channel, it's the fastest going. iSCSI is low cost and very easy to deploy. Fiber Channel SANs are complex and difficult to deploy, manage, and diagnose. Well, what's the real answer? Well, the answer is, it depends. It depends on what's important to your customer. And let's explore this in a bit more detail. When talking to customers about shared storage connectivity, there are several factors to consider that are shown here. There's no one-size-fits-all answer. But when it comes to iSCSI versus Fiber Channel, each protocol has different capabilities when it comes to things like bandwidth, transactional performance, or latency. Same is true from a cost, manageability, and diagnostics perspective as well. The real question is, how does your customer prioritize these? That's where you need to start. Let's start by comparing the technical attributes of 10 gigabit and 25 gigabit Ethernet iSCSI to Gen 5 16 gigabit and Gen 6 32 gigabit fiber channel. For bandwidth, 14 gigabits per second is bigger than 10 gigabits per second, and 28 gigabits per second is bigger than 25 gigabits per second. So fiber channel has the advantage here. From an IOPS perspective, you'd be surprised here to see that uh, iSCSI uh, has an advantage. From a latency standpoint, Fiber Channel is the winner here. For efficiency, both use the same encoding schemes, so this is a draw. And in terms of resiliency and error correction, Fiber Channel has a few more capabilities today, although forward error correction is being implemented on higher performing 25 gigabit Ethernet iSCSI solutions. From a management perspective, both iSCSI and Fiber Channel have really good tools available. And finally, from a cost per port perspective, there's a pretty big range for Ethernet uh, with Fiber Channel right in the middle. So what's the right answer? iSCSI or Fiber Channel? Eh, let's dig in a little bit more before we draw any conclusions. Let's compare the transactional performance. The top graph shows the IOPS performance for Cavium's 57810S running iSCSI offload. This is the same controller used in like the HPE 530 series of flexible network adapters or the CN1100R CNA. The bottom chart shows the IOPS performance curve for the uh, QLogic 2660 series adapter, which is equivalent to the HPE SN1100Q 16 gig HPA. As published, the iSCSI adapter can deliver 1.5 million IOPS, but this is achieved at a 512 byte block size. Same with the Fiber Channel HPA, it achieves its published spec of 1.2 million IOPS at the same 512 byte block size. But what block size is your customer application running? Typically something more around 4K, 8K, or even higher. And when you really look at the data, you see that the IOPS performance of iSCSI is best when the block size is below 2K. Fiber Channel is a choice when the block size is above 2K. These same characteristics apply to the higher bandwidth protocols, the 25 gig iSCSI and the 32 gig fiber channel as well. So the lesson here is don't just go by what's on the specification, but actually look at the data itself. Now let's talk about the network topology for storage connectivity. When you think about a fiber channel architecture, there's always two paths for high availability, SAN A and SAN B, each requiring a different switch and one port of the fiber channel HPA connected to each. The reason for the redundancy is to ensure availability. 
If something happens to SAN A, the system automatically fails over all the data flows through SAN B, and there's no disruption to accessing the shared storage. Well, with iSCSI for shared storage, the best practice design is exactly the same. It's not advisable to share the production network with the iSCSI storage traffic. You don't want a network outage to limit your ability to access storage, nor do you want a storage issue to bring down your network. Just like with Fiber Channel, the iSCSI storage network needs to be a completely separate network built for high availability and to ensure that the data in the shared storage devices are always accessible. So what this means is that from an architecture point of view, there's no difference between deploying Fiber Channel and or iSCSI in a storage environment. Okay, now let's look at a cost comparison. I break down the cost per port here. Now let's start by comparing 10 gig iSCSI to 16 gig Fiber Channel. There's no question that iSCSI with 10 G base T is the low cost option, but nothing is for free. With 10 G base T, there's a penalty you pay in latency that's an order of magnitude higher than iSCSI with SFP plus connections. DAC connectivity with iSCSI is a good low cost option, but the limitation here is in the cable length. Direct attached copper cabling is only supported up to 7 meters in length. Surprisingly, iSCSI with SSP Plus Optics is the highest cost per port at almost $3,500 per port. This is because the 10 gigabit SSP Plus Optics are very expensive, even compared to 16 gig fiber channel optics. In the middle of the cost curve is a 16 gig fiber channel option at just about $2,400 per port. Now let's compare 25 gigabit Ethernet versus 32 gig fiber channel. Direct attached copper cabling with 25 gigabit is by far the lowest cost solution at just under $1,200 per port. Again, the limitation here is that for 25 gigabit ethernet, the maximum supported DAC cable length is five meters. Surprisingly, iSCSI is the highest cost per port at almost $4,900 per port. This again is because the 25 gig SFP28 optics is very expensive, even compared to 32 gig fiber channel optics. And 32 gig fiber channel comes in below this at about $4,500. So where does iSCSI make sense? Well, first iSCSI on an ethernet connection is the only option with both block and file storage connectivity is required. That's because fiber channel only supports block storage. Second, if cost is the number one priority over everything else, iSCSI with 10 G base T is the best choice. If customers are using small block sizes and transactional performance is important, iSCSI is a great choice as well. Or if connecting to network attached storage or hyper-converged appliances, iSCSI is the protocol of choice here too. Where is Fiber Channel the best fit? When performance is the overall priority, iSCSI simply can't compare to Fiber Channel when considering all the performance factors, including bandwidth, block size, IOPS and latency. If high availability is a requirement, Fiber Channel is the best choice because of the higher resiliency features like forward error correction, T10 protection information, as well as the much more robust monitoring and diagnostic capability for Fiber Channel SAN management software like Brocade Network Advisor. Now, if connecting to flash storage, Fiber Channel is really the only choice you want to look at. Latency and IOPS performance characteristics of a 16 gigabit or 32 gigabit Fiber Channel connection are well suited to allow flash storage to run at optimal performance. And finally, Fiber Channel is the best choice for video, backup, disaster recovery, or any other applications that tend to use large block sizes in excess of 128 kilobytes and the need for the available bandwidth uh, that Fiber Channel offers. So to summarize, here's our best practice recommendations. Using flash, go with Gen 5 or Gen 6 Fiber Channel. Connecting to NAS or hyper-converged appliances, iSCSI is the ticket. If manageability, diagnostics, and performance are key concerns, lead with Fiber Channel. And if cost is the number one priority, iSCSI with 10 G base T connections is, is the option of choice. So as I said at the very beginning, which is the better protocol? It just depends. The key is to have a conversation with your client and make sure you understand their requirements before making any recommendations. My hope is you now have the information you need to have that conversation. Before we finish, I want to update you on the next big change coming to for shared storage uh, connectivity. This would be the adoption of Non-Volatile Memory Express, or NVMe, 
for connecting servers to storage. NVMe is a new language for talking to storage that simplifies the command set with a focus on flash or memory-based storage. NVMe essentially replaces SCSI as the command set and greatly reduces complexity with no support for legacy technologies and commands for rotating media and or tape drives. NVMe is used today within servers using NVMe drives and an NVMe controller card. In the near future, we'll see NVMe commands break out of the server and be transmitted over either an Ethernet or fiber channel fabric. Today's high performance Ethernet and fiber channel adapters and switches are essentially NVMe ready, so you can future proof your infrastructure today with Gen 5, Gen 6 fiber channel or 25 gig Ethernet networks and take advantage of the NVMe when it becomes available. NVMe native flash storage devices and operating system support is coming in the very near future. For more information, access our HPE specific microsite at www.qlogic.com slash info slash HPE. Here you're gonna find lots of information on our products, technology that we touched on today. This includes white papers, data sheets, technology briefs, and more. If you're interested in our HPE specific training on IO technology, check out the HPE training site here at hpe.qlogictraining.net. Here you'll find a variety of short on-demand training courses and you'll have the opportunity to gain a certification on HPE and Cavium adapter technology. Finally, check out more of our IO Matters videos here on YouTube. For you channel partners out there, we offer the Follow the Wire rewards for HPE program. Here individuals can earn points, redeemable for merchandise, experience events, travel, and more simply by learning about HPE and Cavium technology or engaging with the Cavium HPE team. So join the program today and start earning points. Well, that's it for this session of Intelligent IO Matters. I want to thank you for your time and attention. And if you have any questions or need any help, please reach out to us via email, Twitter, or on LinkedIn. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.